What's up? I'm Grizz. Welcome back. Heavenly Delusion episode six. Set up a bunch of stuff last week. Uh, we're going to go see a doctor, I think, this weekend. We're going to also go to the area, I think, that had 100% for the water, uh, if I remember that correct. And then we also had our buddy die. I don't remember his name. <laughs> he died and was then cremated and left over was this thing kind of left inside of him. Uh, which was, I guess, just something for us to <laughs> keep an eye on what exactly was in him and was left of him. And all of them kind of seem shocked. So not something it seems like that they did on intention. Tokyo also started getting sick and started questioning if she was sick or not too, or like if she was going to end up dying or what's going to happen with her. So that's something else we're going to have to keep an eye on. Just a bunch of other stuff to <laughs> really watch out for. If you like it all, hit the like and subscribe. Do me a lot to me. Feel free to stick around for the discussion. Leave any comments about this episode or this series in general. Let's get going though with episode six. We're going to get some water, baby. No. We had a bad experience the last time. Oh, she was so happy, though. Well, they were going to get business. Or maybe friends. There you go. Read the cues well. Good job. She looks like uh, Ruka. Run a girl. <laughs> At least with like the bow and the hair and everything. <laughs> After you. <laughs> you might have not meant it that way, but I'm taking it that way. Oh. It's got slashes in its back, too. Ugh. You're gonna be all wet, though. Where's he? Uh, they lurk in the shadows. <laughs> Where's your buddy, though, is the question. Is he under the rock? Oh, he probably is. Is that blurry? Oh, maybe he's under the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a man bear pig. <laughs> Oh my god, that thing's so cool. I'm never gonna get used to how cool that is. Oh. Just blocking off roads and shit with it. Yeah, you're not coming by, buddy. Sick. <laughs> so proud of yourself. The Maru Touch. Let's go. Oh, you can't rename it. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? Not cool, dude. Oh, I did it. okay, I did wake up. <laughs> How many shots do they get with this gun? Because it runs on batteries. <laughs> Until the batteries die, or do they die after like one use? <laughs> what do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> was it supposed to be just be a bear? It looks like it was mixed to me. I don't know why. And then it just starts climbing. Uh, you thought it was dead before too. <laughs> Is it just gonna lurk down there the whole time? I was wondering why they had like shoes off, but I think it's because they were all wet before, right? They were trying to let them dry. Did you drop it? Uh. <laughs> well, the bear's not there, so we can go back down, right? <laughs> and then you die. You got eaten. Good luck. <laughs> you see me as a woman, you must protect. <laughs> Don't play that card, no. Alright, then go. No, that's exactly. Yeah, all right, good luck. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Didn't even finish saying it. Good shit, bro. <laughs> go, go. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's gonna attack. The okay, bro. Gripping the ladder. <laughs> You're gonna have to carry me. 
Oh, okay, you do it alone, all right. <laughs> You're gonna be okay to go down then, though? That's valid. Probably in comparison to someone who probably has never used a gun before. Absolutely. You're a bodyguard. Is it like the, the reassurance that somebody almost needed that they're doing like something good? Yeah, from constantly being told in the past, go away or, you know, not to get involved. To finally get that. Can bring a lot of courage. It's a big ass jump to not hurt yourself, dude. Oh. <laughs> After catching me, oh, I didn't really do it, but it's right. I like this this style of. Yeah. Wow. I was gonna say I like this style of telling the the plan as it's going along. Now I think it's. <laughs> yeah, we're a team. We do this together. <笑>僕には <laughs> So that's where we're at now. Ah, uh, yeah. Too good to be true. Ah, uh, we got a, we made a deal though. Yeah. About that. We made a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. It's a little creepy when he's still calling it that. <laughs> okay, bro. <laughs> so I can't let you. I don't care, though. <laughs> well aware. I don't care. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you interrupted it at the good part. Ah. No, we made <laughs> new fucking cock block. Unbelievable. I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is a good deal, bro. Come on. Uh, and then it all goes out the window from there. Yep. Good shit, bro. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Bro, not a. <laughs> yeah, what? What did you just do? Okay, bro. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we're over here. No signs of illness. Yeah, then what was that last week, huh? You're saying that was fatigue? Sure. Till Tokyo throws up like a motherfucking rock. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. There's no way they just got away. Okay. Bro. Oh. Uh... Okay. Okay. 
Now we're getting some shit. <laughs> that was creepy as hell. Uh, is this like a dream? Please? Okay, thank you. <laughs> what the fuck was that? I'm having some nightmares though. So is the robot thing in the dream or no? It's still sus, but don't they all have the same boots? <laughs> I guess that's a way to live life. Nice. You gotta make money somehow. The woman with ambition. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that, that is what that was. So he did it to cure, then it would have happened the same way, I'm assuming. Or is it like a mental thing? Like he needs to actually focus and like plan to do it? Or is it, can it literally just be coming in contact with somebody else like that? Uh, oh. Probably not, though. Yeah. Got goals. Yep. Reach your dreams. Cool. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm so confused. Well, you got your first time like you wanted. Wow, this dude doing the ultra analysis, really having the yeah, 100% match. Uh. Tokyo can't be noticed on the cams. Asura,の幽霊見た。幽霊。でも夢かもしれない。コナはアスラが好きだったんでしょ。うん。だけど、時を好きなのとは違う感じの好きだよ。知ってるでしょ。I have a feeling that end scene there was supposed to be a bit more of like a shock to people. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it was supposed to be like that as a full reveal there as to Tokyo being a girl. Uh, and I unfortunately spoiled myself with that, like I said, previous episode about me doing that thing and then figuring out, unfortunately, <laughs> Tokyo was a girl from there. That's okay. That's fine. If anything, it just made my reaction less interesting. <laughs> That's fine. It doesn't really matter. We had some fun stuff going on this I, and I like really, really enjoyed it. And I loved so much about this because I don't think there's a lot that we really did to push, I guess, the main narrative along. I'm not saying that we didn't push anything along because of course, of course we did with the relationships between people and some other stuff that's going on and figuring out the thing with the footprint and everything else that went along as well as, you know, moving along more in the direction we need to and all this other stuff that's going down. Sure. But a majority of it was spent on Maru and Kiro just kind of surviving and getting along and doing their thing and the promise they made and everything that kind of went down along with that and just kind of some funny, enjoyable moments between them, some wholesome moments between them, uh, some chaotic things, finding the other girl at the, the hotel they're staying at and then also trying to save the other people and doing all of that. So like a lot of it was a bit more laid back and a lot less, I guess, like mystery kind of focused in a way. Like it felt more like relaxed in a way. While there were a lot of tense moments though, still shockingly out of it, which is really cool that the show can kind of change the pace a little bit and focus elsewhere in certain ways and still nail them completely and keep you engaged and entertained the entirety uh, of the way and it really really did a good thing and i really really like that a lot the whole scene with the bear at the beginning and all that was really fun now is that just a bear i'm assuming it is like and there's nothing crazy going on like no man eater type of thing anything with it or it's not like mutated and like mixed with something just the face looked kind of off and funny to me i don't know maybe i haven't seen the bears in my life but that it just looked like it was kind of mixed or something to me. Uh, regardless, the whole thing with them was fun. 
the shooting of the gun and taking down like the the support beams or whatever it was to like kind of block off the road or like land on the bear or do whatever i had to it was really cool because i never can really get over how cool that gun is to me uh and that's gonna be so cool just to continue to see it used uh and then them believing the bear is dead and maru going to do his maru touch giving it a brand new name uh trying to spice things up because you know he hates the fire touch name and then the bear just opened its eyes like the fucking undertaker <laughs> it was so funny to me uh it was something i expected to kind of happen too but it was really funny and done really well uh them going up top and like kind of being nervous and, the, and kira dropping the battery and getting concerned trying to make a plan and not understand what to do and then the deal that kira ends up making with maru and instantly as he's in the middle of stating what the exact deal is gonna be maru is just like hard enough and just jumps in <laughs> The action it has it it's really really excellent and so well done and maru is the the absolute embodiment of just like let your desire show and just like first things in your mind just kind of let out and he just jumps right to action immediately and he does not care uh and he's not afraid to hide and show who he really is as a person or what he really wants and his desires uh and i really love that and he's really really cool we got a really cool scene too with kiru having the flashbacks regarding the past and being told constantly uh being that he was useless when it came to killing off the man eater like i guess whatever situation that we saw happen before and robin constantly like trying to be like do not come along or you're you know we don't want you involved or you're not going to help us or just whatever the the reason was and other people constantly putting him down and not wanting him around for whatever reason so the fact that maro is able to give some reassurance and really be like i want you around i like you around you're useful when you're around i need you you're necessary uh for us and our survival and all of this it was really cool because it allows for that reassurance and that mindset to kind of be able to kick in and get there for you to be like i'm needed i somebody's relies on me in a way and it makes you kind of not feel as hopeless and useless and it makes you feel like you have a purpose and that you are wanted and it's a really excellent feeling and that's something that can happen with anybody and it can give you lots of confidence and really allow you to kind of carefree go into the things that you really want to do works out exactly well though and perfect for Kiro in the situation and Maru is really really helpful for that despite him probably not even noticing at all after we escape we head to this area where we go to the 100% water section along the way we meet this girl who looks like Ruka from Ren a Girlfriend if she was animated and drawn different they basically agree to kind of take the hotel room and they find out it's not really a scam because they can take anything that's like important for them to be around so it's actually a good situation and then that really setting themselves up uh, along the way they go down to look for the water and everything that they need and they end up finding two dudes who ended up getting attacked and killed by a man-eater and which we're never able to actually explore the underground and really find this man-eater himself uh we can do all that we can to kind of help these guys we get one of the guys who's still out there alive and you know put them in position that we can kind of save and help and hopefully bring him back to life or heal him in some sort of way which was really cool completely unpaid like in a way and they weren't really gaining anything from it besides just being really good people uh along the way though we do have a conversation where Kiro kind of comes to the understanding at least that the map that they were sold was kind of by these bandits and the stuff that they found uh the people in the group that they found beforehand and that group is kind of using them to lure people in in order to i guess just take the shit that they have or beat them up or do whatever they have to i guess uh, and probably the entirety of the map it might be a lie now not all of it and there might be some truth written on there but the thing regarding the water and stuff it's pretty net understanding that people are going to go here uh if it has something like that written on it and this is going to be the ideal location which is perfect for them to kind of set people up and do whatever they have to to further themselves so because of that it kind of makes some of the other things on there a little less viable i guess but it also does give you a map still at least so you can figure out exactly where you are in your surroundings and what's going on despite the the labels and stuff they put probably being wrong kiro tries to shut things down and go to sleep really quick and maru is not letting that go though as they made a promise and he will see himself through with this and i absolutely love his determination to be able to do this although he got a little bit aggressive sure uh it was necessary i think for you to fulfill your 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 goal here or fulfill your your promise that you made right as the deed is about to be done though the the hotel lady comes in and she immediately breaks things up and 
pulls Mara away and she's like, I'm gonna give you another room, get you out of here. But then we find out that she's actually doing that because she's trying to get her own. She's trying to shoot her shot in a way. Uh, we later do find out though that that's strictly because she uses that to gain as much money and power and everything that she can. So she kind of sets people up or she she's willing to let people do whatever it is that they want as long as she can get paid and make money for it and make herself more well off and put herself in a good position, uh, which is admirable, right? I mean, it, the ways you go about it might not be the most ethical or, you know, whatever, but it, it's admirable that she's doing whatever she can here to kind of make it go. The whole situation, though, was really funny when Kiro came in and saw Mara, like, pinning her down in the position that he did. And he just looked really bad, and he's so goofy because he has no clue ever what he's doing, and he doesn't understand why things look bad when they do. He just kind of does everything. But in this situation, we find out something really interesting about how his ability, the Maru Touch ability here, works on everybody. Uh, people, man-eaters, animals, like literally anything, it kind of seems that we, we figure out. So it does make me wonder, I'm assuming this is the case, uh, that he does it subconsciously in a way like he doesn't actually have to think it's more of just when he applies like force or pressure or his hand onto like something it kind of just starts happening so if he did this with Kiru instead would that have happened I mean I'm assuming yes so I guess it's a good thing because he ended up might be able to just kill people extremely easy if this happens which is a very scary thought and definitely something he's gonna have to struggle with and live with at this point our journey for our main two here continues along and they're gonna continue to go wherever I guess they gotta head to next and do whatever it is they have to do we only flashed over one time throughout the episode and then one in the after credit the episode itself leads us to fully see that the doctor is really focusing in that Tokyo is the one who came Came in and left the footprint and does some sort of analyzation and everything it is able to verify that so what the doctor exactly is going to do i have no idea but the doctor does begin to question things regarding why tokyo wasn't detected and how even she was able to find her way over here and be able to get here uh which you know leads you to something what exactly is the case and as the doctor is forming this this opinion or this theory and trying to figure out exactly what's going on we see more cuts of the camera as tokyo leaves her room and goes to find kona and once again tokyo doesn't appear to be on any of these cameras that we're seeing so what exactly is the situation there as we've talked about before i'm still under the impression that tokyo believes she has no powers or abilities or anything but it is something that has to do with invisibility or not being able to be detected by cameras or just whatever the equipment that they use is and it really just cannot pick her up which is something that's fantastic but she literally will have no clue about that which is really really cool uh also i guess we had the moment where the doctor starts talking about how she isn't sick or there isn't like anything wrong with her and it's just, you know, might be fatigued or something like that. Now, I believe that might have been part of the dream. I don't actually know for sure if that was before the dream that we saw with her in or if that was afterwards, but I don't know. In the middle of it, though, we do see the girl who ended up hanging themselves before in the past, which is like really, really creepy looking. It looks like an alien <laughs> almost. I had absolutely no idea what was going on there. Nightmarish, very creepy. And then immediately, as soon as she wakes up and she's like, oh shit, that was just a dream. The doctor, once again, just kind of looking at her and being sus about exactly what's going on. But that is interesting too. Is it something similar to, I guess, what we heard? I think it was Mime Hime who said it before about the the visions that she was having of somebody similarly looking to Tokyo coming in and saving them or something like that. So is it something similar to that where... Tokyo is also having like visions of like other stuff that could be happening or things that are going on or, or being talked to by the dead almost here or is it literally just a nightmare it's probably just a nightmare but that's something I just wanted to pose that as a question as a possibility and then the end scene everything going on with Kona uh makes sense they talked about what they wanted to do beforehand like I said I did that that poll thing before so I found out that Tokyo was a girl uh beforehand unfortunately and spoiled myself on that and I don't think that was supposed to be something that was revealed until this episode I'm guessing now so this was supposed to be more of a shock thing but I kind of ruined that on myself uh my bad <laughs> but that's cool and I like the way that they kind of walked on edge about it and like touched on everything that they had to but never really brought it up until this exact moment and I thought it was overall done well and likable a lot is Tokyo actually sick though is also a question for me to worry about I don't know if that's the case I'm just gonna say no but I think there's a strong possibility that's still the case and somebody was just lying to them uh, and it also all depends on if that thing of the robot telling Tokyo that she wasn't uh, was a part of the dream or not because if it was a part of the dream there's a strong possibility she is but if it wasn't I don't think that they would lie to the kids I guess they could it wouldn't really affect them too much 
and the kids don't really know much or better or anything going on, on the outside. So they're, I mean, you might as well tell them a lie to make them feel better themselves. Right. So I don't know. Uh, but yeah, something else just to keep an eye on and where we go from here. I'm assuming just more little hints and things going on on the inside. And then on the outside, it's going to be uh, wherever they head to next. Uh, I, be I thought we were going to go with that guy to a doctor or whatever that he was looking for, unless we weren't going with him and we were just finding the doctor for him. I don't actually know uh, unless we just never agreed to it because he dropped his thing or whatever. And we just called it quits there. Uh, I don't actually remember. So I don't know if that's something they're still on the look for and that's where our next location that we're headed to or not. I have no idea. Uh, if not, then we're just going to head to another location and continue to journey forward and hopefully find our way to heaven. And that's going to be all for me though, because I don't really know what else is going to happen. If you liked it, I'll hit the like and subscribe to me and all that to me. Feel free to follow me on Twitter. My email list, both links are in the description. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'll be back next week for episode seven. Thank you for watching and see you.